Hello, good afternoon, artists, art lovers, my art friends. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back to my studio. I'm super excited to be here with all of you today. We're going to be painting again today. And surprise, we are going to be painting one of these little antique boxes. Can everybody see this? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I'm just sitting down here to paint because I paint these in my lap. Hi, Arena. Hi, Maria. Hi, Sharon Ann. Hello, hello. Hi, Lori Barrison. So good to see you. So let me see about this angle here. Um, as I would like for you. Oh, I think I have to fix the this, I think. Okay. Hi, JoLynn. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Eva. Kathy Michaels. Hello. Welcome, welcome, everybody. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Hi, Coral. Hello. Trying to figure out how to do this since um, <laughs> it's a little bit of a different setup than how I normally paint. Might have to go up even higher. Hi, Wilhelmina. Okay, that shows this box. I hope everybody is enjoying these free Facebook Lives for my December month of giving. It has been so much fun. So, so, so much fun. Okay. Let's try that. I think that can, I think that might be able to work. I just might have to hold it up a little bit um, more. Or I wonder if this can go any lower. Let me try to make this lower, shorter. I just want to try to make sure you guys get the best view possible here. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Oh, gosh. Okay. That might be the best I can do. Okay. So... This one on Saturday, I pre-toned. Um, if you were here Saturday, I pre-toned this. And um, I have another one. And actually, I've kind of touched up. This, these are really old, okay? They're from Florence or Italy, I guess, Italy. Maybe not. They're, they say Florentia, which wouldn't be Italian for <laughs> Florence. That would be Firenze. But um, anyways, at any rate, handmade in Italy with gold leaf. And so I did touch up um, on the bottom of this one. These are really antique. So I did touch up some of the big, big, big chunks of gold leaf that were missing. So if you have something like that, or if you have a gold leaf frame, this product is really amazing for that. This rub and buff um, gold leaf. I just used... The gold leaf color, they come in all different colors. Is this, is the orientation correct? Is that reading backwards or is that reading correctly for you guys? Just want to make sure I have the camera angle correct. So I'm going to be painting some um, roses out of my imagination on this box. And then before we get started on that, I'm going to tone this box, which is ever so slightly different. And this one here. Okay, so um, very slightly different in the contour. And this one is like a little bit darker on the gold leaf. And this one overall is in better shape in terms of less gold leaf is missing. Um, and I think that the color of the green looks kind of less faded. This one also has a beautiful little music box inside. I don't know if that is original to the piece or not. 
I can't figure out what the song is. I would love to know what the song is, but <laughs> can't figure it out. Oh, thank you, Katha, for telling me. Hello, Barton. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So good to see you all here. Hi, Susan. There's just something so relaxing about painting these, especially sitting down and painting them. You know, I can gaze out the window, put on some lovely music if I'm by myself. Um, it's just really, really relaxing. Sometimes I think to have more joy, cultivate more joy in our creative practice, sometimes it's a matter of like slowing down, slowing down and um, kind of taking it easy. So I'm going to tone this one a little more in the green family. I'm thinking maybe on this one I'll paint like pink peonies against a greenish tone, but I did want to tone these and let the tone dry before I paint on them. So I'm using ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and you can kind of see that that's almost the same color there. Maybe I'll put a little pinch of raw umber in there just to get it a little less pure in color. And we'll just kind of test that out. If anybody knows what this song is, please let me know. I don't know if you can even hear it through my AirPods or not on the video. Just using my medium, just to get a tone. I think I'm going to add a little touch more yellow ochre into this. Sorry, I didn't realize I was holding that up too high. So let me see if I can get this a little closer because it's going to be difficult for me to, I usually just sit these in my lap. So let me see if I can get y'all a little bit closer. Perhaps. So I hope everybody is having a wonderful month, getting into the holiday spirit, I hope getting into feeling all the, all the love and all the generosity all around us. And the quickest way to feel, I think, abundant and loved is for us to be the ones to give, which is why I'm doing this this month. It's a special thank you to everybody who, you know, shows me support all year long. or has shown me support in the past. Okay, so I like this color. I think it's nice, kind of a earthy green. Reminds me of um, some of the old Van Tan Latour paintings. You know, it's kind of my inspiration is how he would tone his canvas in the background. And then just, um, Let's see, I wonder if this window light, maybe I should change lighting. I think maybe this window light's causing a lot of glare because it's a backlight for you guys. Okay, bear with me just a second. This is not typically, and let me turn on um, another light source since that's gonna be so dark. Part of my ass. <laughs> Excuse my butt. Let's do this. Instead, I think maybe this will work better. Maybe. So while I'm doing this, I'll just remind all of you that um, the Christmas party is coming up this Friday. Um, so you don't have much time left to join that if you want in on that. Um, you do have to sign up or register by Thursday for that and um, the raffle as well. So if you want to, excuse my butt, <laughs> if you want to get in on the um, raffle tickets. Hi, Jermaine. Welcome, welcome. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. It's awesome. Um, that, those will expire Thursday as well. And those are $20 a piece, and it's for a chance to win 
um, one of my larger paintings, size 12 by 16 or under, with the max value being at $4,000 for one of those. So, and you don't have to be at the Christmas party to win the raffle prize. Um, so anyways, the link and all of that is there if you want to check that out. So there's my tone on this one, which I think I am liking. Um, so I'm going to let that dry. You can see how different that color is from the first one that I toned on Saturday. <clears throat> okay. So I just cover my lap with paper towels here whenever I'm doing this from imagination. Hey, Miriam, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hi, Phil, hi, Anne-Marie, good afternoon. Hi, Shauna, hi, Lana, hi, Candy, hi, Judy, So, hi, Barb, hi, hi again, Barb, I just saw you earlier today, ha, ha, ha. Oh, it's, we had such a good, um, we had such a good support call today um, in the Art Life School. It was so inspiring and everybody is just um, having so many amazing wins and breakthroughs and growth um, in their art life journey. It's, it's really cool. Okay, now I will tell you that I probably won't talk as much on this demo. Okay, I'll do what I can, but Painting from um, imagination. Um, let's see. I don't know if I'm going to start with that white. It's a little bit, little bit of a different process for me, and it's been a lot of fun doing this as well. Um, just kind of tapping into that intuition. So I generally do get kind of a picture in my head. I'm going to use the same colors I toned with, just a little bit darker. Um, for this original box. Um, I do generally get kind of a picture in my head based on, you know, maybe the colors of the particular box or value of the box. And um, so it kind of percolates up there for a few days <laughs> or a couple of days, or sometimes it is, you know, maybe like a really quick stroke of inspiration. I don't want this to be super wet, so I'm going to get some of that medium out of my brush. So I'll just kind of start by mapping in, massing in where I think these roses are going to go. Being a little bit slower on this because I, I want to try to leave the tone to some degree if I can. And I'm conscientious about where is that main rose going to be? Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm glad I, I'm glad I checked this because I want to make sure that this, <laughs> I was doing it backwards. I want to make sure that this, um, that the orientation of it is, you know, where you open it in the front. So do over. That's what's nice too. If the tone is dry, you know, you, you can just kind of wipe that off and then do it again. So I'm thinking I'm going to have kind of one big, big main rose here, slightly lower center. You know, roses often when they're fully open kind of have this sort of hexagon type of shape. Maybe one up here is more kind of in profile. So I think to be able to do this as well, you have to maybe have painted a lot of roses. But even so, I would say it's kind of fun to, um, there's one in profile, I'm going to do like a petal folding under, it's really kind of fun to test what you do understand and what you can visualize. Um, sometimes um, being a representational artist and working from life or from photo, we can often um, 
we can often just become kind of a slave to copying. Thinking maybe a little leaf coming out here. And we really do have an enormous amount of visual data in our minds and also just our intuition saying, put this here, that would look good there. I'm not quite sure what this is. Maybe it's a stem or something. So it's really good for that as long. Well. I'm gonna put a little bit of burnt sienna into this. And then of course, some of the um, life study that you've done um, also comes in comes in to kind of like this open space there. Maybe there's like a little bud or something that hasn't bloomed yet down here. So I might add, you know, some more to this, um, but I think that that is a good start. I don't want to feel it, fill it up entirely edge to edge. I'm going to add some more burnt sienna and some cadillo deep. I'm thinking these are going to be white roses, but they're going to have a really nice kind of golden glow in the shadows. So in the center, just a little more of a golden color, maybe even pulling out of this mixture, just doing some burnt sienna and cad yellow deep. There's some nice rich glow here and also some of that glow light passing through because I, I mostly paint my light source um, coming from top left. It's very, and I do that so repetitively that it's very easy for me to know what would be in shadow based on experience, what would be catching more light. Okay. Use a little pinch of this paper towel just to kind of wipe away where the, the major lights would be, it's just going to reveal that dry tone underneath. This is a really nice surface to work on, by the way. So smooth. So smooth. So pretty. And then like the edges of these I have to get another little paper towel would be catching light. But you know where the petals start to kind of fold over. And we know with roses that the petals are um, kind of spiraling out from the center. So they are really never never really parallel to one another always kind of asymmetrical okay I'm trying to use some flake white here switch down to a number two brush You can, um, hi, John Robert Small, we certainly miss you. Merry Christmas, happy holidays to you too. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre in here. I'm going to make these kind of like an ivory white. Just a little bit in there. And if my light is coming from top left, then that means that my bottom right hand side planes. Put more yellow ochre in here for some of the in between. Shapes would be catching uh, most amount of light. This one being more head on, we would have more of these kind of little patterns of petals um, more head on kind of spiraling out from the center. A 
little finer edge of light here. And if it picks up some of that tone, that's actually a good thing. It'll just create some nice neutral colors, desaturated colors. But these strokes down here will be the broadest and the brightest and lightest. And the, therefore also the thickest. And now I can kind of better clearly, more clearly judge, maybe this is a petal here that's kind of falling away. You know how as they, you know, get more mature, my, they are always like the most beautiful right before they're about to kick the bucket, aren't they? Nice and full and brilliant in their maturity level. Very similar to people. Some people. <laughs> so maybe it'll be nice to have, you know, a little petal here. I'm not sure. Have to play with it and see. But I just really like this process because it's very, um, you just feel very connected. You don't feel like a, um, you don't feel like you're translating anything that you're seeing. You just feel very kind of in the moment. Like everything is just coming straight through. Like you're just kind of a vessel, I guess. And also, you know, just kind of whatever you, whatever the extent of your knowledge is at that point is what you have to work with. Um, so it, it could be frustrating depending on that. And I think most of the time you'll just be kind of surprised at how well you can paint, you know, just bringing something up into your mind's eye. Just painting some more yellow ochre on the interior here just to raise the value of that shadow so it's not quite so dark. Some more cad, cad yellow deep for a little more kind of fiery glow on the interior. Darkest would be like in the center, the darkest and the warmest since this is an ivory rose, some more, more of the um, burnt sienna on the center. And I'd like to get some leaf colors, so some ultramarine blue, cad yellow deep. Kind of like how this shape sort of repeats the shape that's in the, the corner here, which is kind of fun. This will kind of be similar to the color that is on the green of the box. Maybe there's another leaf under here. Just to pop that that white a little bit more. And any of this can be kind of wiped off or taken off if I feel like it is not quite the right placement. Okay. White and shadow, I'm going to do some ultramarine blue, some yellow ochre and white. A little bit of that orange in there. We get some, some of these cool notes in the shadow.
like I said, I'm probably not going to be able to talk quite as much as what I normally do. Um, it's cutting in and out. Um, I'm sorry about that. I think it should record well, though. Yeah, Bobby said something about muscle memory, and it's, it, it is, I think, very similar, you know, to that. I think it's, uh, yeah, it is a lot of muscle memory, like, oh, this is kind of what, what I can, what I've learned, or maybe what I can visualize, you know, out of my sort of visual data bank of information that I have to work with. You know, depending on how many rose paintings I've painted or how many I've studied over the years from other artists' paintings. So, yeah, it could be um, uh, a lot of muscle memory. And then also, I feel like, too, um, a bit of just kind of intuitive just listening, paying attention to your intuition and what it says, like try this, go a little bit lighter here. So it's also kind of a good practice to um, pay atten paying attention to what the painting needs more so than just copying uh, reality. Because sometimes as representational artists, we can definitely kind of fall fall into that trap quite readily and um, not, al always, not always does that make for the best end result in a painting. So just starting starting this whole thing off with hog hair, bristle brushes, and then um, if I need to, I'll move into um, soft hair brushes. Just trying to push that center just a little bit darker. So you get some more depth there. Trying to get a little bit more overlap here where the main body of the roses um, more in front of the petals and the leaves back behind it. So just trying to get a little more overlapping edge. So this month in the um, Art Life School group, our focus is really on cultivating joy in our creative practice. And this is just one of the ways we've been talking about doing that is making sure that we're listening to our own artistic voice enough, um, nurturing our own creativity and what our, just asking like what our creativity wants from us today or for us today. And yeah, on the support call, we were talking about how, you know, just watching language, um, watching the language that we use, like, and, and how we feel whenever we go to the easel. Because if we're showing up to the easel, like, oh, I have to do this, or I should do this, you know, um, then that is really the energy that you're going to be creating from rather than like if you're actually feeling kind of excited or looking forward to it or you know so you know one quick thing that we could change in our language about that is changing should to could you know just instead of saying should i should paint today 
you know, you, we, you could just switch it to get rid of should and just say could. I could paint today. That's a possibility that could be a part of my day today. Um, and you know, what could, what could I possibly paint? What might be fun to paint? What might um, be interesting or what, what ideas am I, you know, looking forward to exploring? And that way, I feel like we just, we stay out of ruts, we stay creative, we stay hearing and listening to our own voice. I mean, it's really fun to be an artist. Um, it's just sometimes we make such a chore out of things that should still remain fun <laughs> and light. I'm just trying to add more layers here, more kind of ruffly, petally layers. I feel like I could get, um, let's see, like some more depth in between some of these petals. Some of that too might, might be able to be created by taking away uh, some of the paint that's down. Just check in and see if you guys have any questions. Thank you, Candy. Yeah, and these make really nice gifts for people too. So if you have anybody in your life that you think would love something like this, again, I just, um, I found these on eBay. Um, a lot of the eBay sellers are very open to, you know, accepting offers things like that. If you see one that you really love, but maybe it's out of your price range a bit. So you can always make an offer to them as well if they have that option on their post. I think I'm going to make this little um, bud a little more yellow. So thank you guys so much for um, all of your compliments and comments. It's really, really appreciate it. Maybe this one will be a little more in that yellow family. So maybe like the cad yellow deep and white. Um, and then of course, darker on the shadow side. So um, burnt sienna, I'm going to use some of this green to neutralize that and some cad yellow deep. So I would recommend doing as much of it out of imagination as possible. And then if you wanted to, you could always pull up like a, an artist or maybe a photo of a rose or something like that. If you feel like you're needing just a little bit more help to visualize some of it, but I would really see what you can do. I think you'll be surprised what you can do just from from your mind, you know, and maybe for you, it's, uh, I would say kind of go with something that feels very familiar that you feel like you can visualize how to paint. So if that's not roses, maybe it's sunflowers, you know, maybe it's, um, something else, maybe it's, um, cherries or, you know what I mean? Maybe it's something else entirely. I just feel like I need a little bit more light here on the top edges of this rose. So I'll definitely paint some more paintinis too, but since this one was so ready to, it was dry and, and ready to paint, I was like, Ooh. I want to try it, try it and see what I can come up with. Just not loving 
the placement of that. So I'm going to push that around a little bit more. like maybe this one would maybe be curving up catching the light a little bit more before it goes into shadow maybe this one's folding down here catching the light more more lighter a little bit of highlight right on the edge of this bud Okay, I'm going to put a little more yellow ochre into this green. I think my leaf here can extend out just a little bit longer, go a little bit lighter where the vein is. I'm trying to see if I can get some variety along the edges. I like to try to make one side like it's kind of folded up catching the light a little bit more. Maybe even kind of bring in some of that green to carve out a little more fine tuning on those edges on the contour of the rose, a little more gray within the shadow here. On these roses, you know, you're always going to have cools and warms, especially on these white roses. Um, it's a little bit more like painting flesh tone. Keep an eye on my time here. I got an art date at four at the museum. <laughs> hmm. Go see some art. This is also such a, a lovely meditative practice as well. I just don't feel too attached to the outcome. So, you know, I just kind of feel like, well, I could always, you know, wipe this, wipe this back and start again if I didn't like how it looked. And with these paintinis and little boxes and stuff, it's kind of nice because we just don't have as much, generally we don't, don't have as much time investment and we're really just having fun exploring. So we're not, um, not really over dramatizing anything. Oh, I like that going, okay, a little cooler and lighter. And then maybe just the finest little edge, pinprick edge of light along that rim. Maybe a little more glow passing through this thinner petal yeah, a little more yellow you use this cad lemon as well just to get a little bit more glow something kind of similar to what the background color is a little glow in between petals Yay, I'm so happy that you're enjoying it. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions um, that I might be able to answer. The nice thing too about this is we can kind of turn it around quite easily all sides just to kind of see the abstraction of the shapes and see if there's anything else that kind of pops out to our eye as needing a little adjustment. It's always nice to look at things from different angles. I would like that center to be a little more of the leaf to be a little more predominant. And I think the shape of this leaf Maybe could get a little more rounded edge. OK, 
picking back through the paint, which will make that look a little bit more translucent, revealing some of the tone underneath. But anytime you have a light over a dark, it kind of creates a cool, cooling sensation. Maybe this needs to be just a little bit bigger. Using my a lizard, I'm sorry, my um, burnt sienna just to neutralize that green a little bit. This is a nice separator of these lights as well. There could just be like little peekaboos of light showing through. This is a little scary to do, but it just felt like it needed something there. This can be left kind of unfinished too, which I think will lend itself well to the, you know, kind of antiquity of the box. Okay. This edge is kind of really cluttered, not, not clear enough. See if I can get it a little more clear. Should be some, some more on the interior here that would be picking up some of the lights. Some, some little pinpricks of light a bit here and there. Sometimes too, it's a matter of like carving out the color that's behind it. A little bit of green in there as a turning color might be nice. Also use that to soften some transitions or some edges. Just kind of turning the box all the way around. Until something occurs to me to, to do. A little flavor of red there on the green. <laughs> John. John Robert Small, he is um, a fa fantastic sense of humor. Well, that didn't used to be the case, John, I can tell you that. <laughs> I've frisbeed many a, many a painting, broken many a brush. I think I know what needs to happen here. Feels like there should maybe be another little layer of petal, I don't know.
I'm just trying to think which ones would be getting the least amount of light, which parts of the petals would be getting the least amount of light, and therefore kind of going the darkest, so kind of little cast shadow shapes in between one petal overlapping in front of the other. But, um, you know, it, it kind of, when you mature as an artist, which just takes, you know, it takes a lot of painting, I think, to get to that place where you, um, you don't give up, but you let go easier. You let, you let go more easily of attachment to the outcome or to the result, you know, a little bit of a Zen type of situation going on there. But in the beginning, it's like you want what you want so badly. You want to see that result so badly and you want it to, you know, be so satisfying and, and maybe even, maybe even kind of prove that you're on the right path, you know, or that you really are meant to be an artist, you know, because the proof is in the pudding, but, um, at some point with a lot of mileage, I may not look, look old, although I am getting quite older these days, but I might not look like I have a lot of mileage, but I do have a lot of paint mileage, a lot of art mileage. So with that does come a, um, a bit of a level of no idea what would be happening here. Um, but a bit of, of a level, I think, of just um, acceptance and capacity to tolerate failures better. Anyways, I'm still trying to kind of figure this one out. some point all these colors kind of come come together and create more of a neutral just the right kind of neutral that you're on the hunt for Maybe I'll switch down to, um, I have about five more minutes, so let me see if you guys have any um, questions as well. Let's see, I'll switch down to a smaller brush and also need to sign it somewhere. Yeah, keep an eye out for your little boxes, Coral. Um, I just got to jump back in and get back to work, girl. <laughs> sign this with you know mostly mostly some burnt sienna a little bit of that green too now I can also kind of walk away from this for a little bit and come back and look at it with fresh eyes and see if there's anything else that I see A signature on there and maybe also with this liner brush or with you could also like use a palette knife if you wanted to just to kind of indicate with the center vein on those leaves you don't want to really do it all the way through 
like a perfect line because that ends up looking kind of weird. Um, I do feel like this one could be cleaner looking though. So I'll just kind of wipe away some of that paint. Flat, flatten it out maybe with my brush. Any of this paint that you wipe away is going to be so beautiful because it's just going to have that glow, the glow of the tone shimmering through. I just felt like that should have like a cleaner, sharper edge typically on those veins. A little bit of blue and white, just a little less bit of more cool highlight hitting on the edge of that. This is kind of like, I guess, um, not quite like toll painting. I guess it would be like a more of a fine art version. You know, it's interesting because a lot of artists throughout history have done artwork like this, you know, Whistler. Whistler designed an entire, what, the peacock room using a little medium on this brush just to clean up some of the drawing here. The peacock room he was known for um, doing, which is really mostly decorative art. And actually, just the other day, of course, at the museum, I was seeing um, Maynard Dixon actually had this really beautiful designed screen. I actually liked his screen better than his paintings. <laughs> Maybe there's a pedal here. Yeah. So um, I think it's why it's important, you know, just to not to box ourselves in and to realize that there is, has been a long history and lineage of artists doing you know, uh, furniture pieces or functional, functional art pieces like this. It doesn't all just have to be like a wall hanging painting. A little more light on that. And of course, you know, the uh, Japanese and Chinese artists are the, the best to look at that. I mean, they just turned everything into art. And pretty much all of their art was, you know, super functional. <laughs> it was like there was really no line between art and just everyday functional objects, you know, in their in their lives. This one, I think, is just going to take a little more thinking about and maybe even finding a reference or something at this angle to see if I can get it. To where I'm happier with it, the one that's in profile. Okay, my friends, I hope that this has been um, enjoyable to you. Um, I hope that you've learned a lot from it or maybe got some fresh inspiration or new ideas. Of course, I will be with you again to Mali, to Mali, to Mali for another live. I'm thinking probably some more paintinis, you know, maybe something kind of fun and light. Um, also, if you guys have any um, thoughts or ideas, just let me know if there's anything that you would like to see me paint during this time together here in December. And yeah, I am open. I am open to any ideas that you might have. Okay, my friends, there is our finish, or at least at this stage, finish piece. You're so welcome. And then that would be the little inside. And what I've been doing is putting little notes from, little uplifting notes from spirit in there, kind of tuning into that intuition just listening for the right words to say and, and hoping and believing and trusting that these will go, that the right note will go to the right person. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I will see you 
most likely, same time to Molly. <laughs> You're so welcome. It's my pleasure. Yay, thank you so much, Anne Marie. I bet you can find lots of little things like this in France where you are, right? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, much love, everybody. Um, bye for now. Most likely, it'll be same time tomorrow for tomorrow's demo. Bye. Happy painting. <laughs>